My wrath is a swift star that falls from the night. My voice is the thunder that shatters the mountain. Anatasia is my name. Why waste time on a lot of childish inscriptions, Betty? We've got business to talk over with Mr. Rutledge here. If those inscriptions are so childish, Professor Brewster, suppose you read them. That's not quite fair, Professor Cleary. Just happens that my father and I have made a lifelong study of this type of Indian writing. Exactly. And as far as science knows, you are the only ones able to translate. Dead languages and hieroglyphics are not my specialty, Cleary. Besides, no one today believes in those silly superstitious cults. The Indians do. Oh, those ignorant, dirty savages. Why, they... What do you want, Ota? Enochrony Washke. Pardon me for a moment. Oh, what a primitive, masterful Indian. Don't you think so, Professor Fromm? Yes, indeed, Henrietta. A fine representative of the early American. Let's forget this nonsense and get down to business. We came here to find the lost city of Lukachukai. I thought the primary object of this expedition was to find my father, Professor Faxon. Rather, I should say, to join them, Betty. We have no evidence that they have been lost. But it's been over three months since I've heard from my father. I know if he were safe, he would have communicated with me. Your father and Professor Faxon are far too experienced in archaeological exploring to meet with serious difficulty. They have probably made some great scientific discovery that has detained them. I'm not going to delay the search any longer. If Mr. Rutledge can't supply a suitable guide for us, and we'll go on without them. Oh, well, Miss Marsh. Yes? I've just made arrangements with Ota to guide us in the search for your father. Oh, you mean that primitive, masterful Indian? Yes. He doesn't look trustworthy to me, Rutledge. I'm glad you'll be along. Thanks. <laughs> It's Faxon. He's with the Musketeers. Where'd you find him, Tucson? About 15 miles up the country. He was out of his head. Mentioned something about your trading post, so I brought him here. According to my deductions, he's an escaped convict from the state prison. You see, his wrists show the markings of handcuffs. His hands are callous from heavy prison labor. And he's probably a foreigner because he keeps raving about a place called Lukatukai. The sun drove him loco and he... I suggest you keep out of the sun, too. He's not a convict. He's Fester Faxon, a famous scientist, and he's not a foreigner. His ancestors came over on the Mayflower. Three months ago, Professor Faxon and my father left here to search for the lost city of Luka Chukai. He's... he's returned alone. Don't pay any attention to Sherlock Holmes here, miss. He's the one that's a little loco in the head. Yep. Reading detective stories done it. Used to be a pretty sane hombre. There's it again. The whistling skull. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Cows in my ears. Day and night. Let me go. Let me go. You're with friends now, Professor Faxon. That's only a museum piece. Cleary. Bruce. Friends. Professor Faxon, what about my father? Is he alive? I... I don't know. We found it. The lost city of Lukachukai. The legends of the Whistling Skull were true. It guards an amazing ancient village. There's an enormous treasure of gold. It took us days to move it, but it's hidden. Hidden where no one can find it. Look! Look! We've got to go back. They've got Professor Marsh. They'll torture him. Oh, can you lead the way? Yes, but it's a terrible journey. How far is it from here? Did you cross the Chuska Range to find the city? The Chuskas? Yes. Yes, 
Yes, up the painted gorge, then north of the fork, and then... Look at that. Right! Let's have a look at my Don't touch that knife, Rutledge. It's a plain case of murder. Everyone in this room is a possible suspect. Stay where you are, all of you. No one is to leave this room until the sheriff arrives. Well, if I phone the sheriff. Well, hurry up, hurry up. Oh, well, if you get off my foot. Listen, Hawkshaw, don't get mixed up in this. Stick with your stories. We got plenty of work to do at the ranch. Are you able to translate the writing, Miss Marsh? Whoever shall seek to defile the sacred city shall cry for death and find it not. Professor Faxon was killed by means of that knife in the hands of an unknown person. I shall have to hold you all as material witnesses. Sheriff? The curse on this knife handle shows plainly that it's a clear-cut case of Indian vengeance. I disagree with you, Stoney. The murderer may be unknown, but he's still in this room. The door was closed, and there don't happen to be any windows. You may be right, Tucson, but the evidence isn't strong enough to prove anything. I'm going to report this case as a non-Indian murder. Exactly right, Sheriff Lane. Faxon was probably trailed from the lost city by some Indian who killed him to ensure his silence. Well, I intend to continue the search for my father regardless of what's happened. The expedition will carry on as planned, Betty. Don't they? Where did it come from, and who does it belong to? It belongs to me, Tex. What's in it? Only Elmer. Me and him was going to be on an act over at the Charity Bazaar at Rawhide. Elmer, hey? So there was someone else in the room. Open that bag, Lullaby. But I Elmer... said open that bag. You're not under suspicion, Elmer. Say, did anybody think of questioning the sheriff? What a odd specimen. You're no bouquet of roses yourself, lady. <laughs> <laughs> the investigation is closed, folks. It's just about time. Tony, you know darn well that someone of that group in the room killed Faxon. Why did you pull that Indian stuff? Well, you're right, Tex, but you could never prove it in court. Now, here's my idea. They're all going on an expedition together, and uh, we're joining them. Give me one week's time, and I'll bring back the killer. I don't know. They're heading into taboo territory. There's a cult of fanatic Indians in those mountains, and they're dead set against white intruders. That danger is bad enough without having a murderer in the expedition. Oh, come on, Tex. One week from today, and I'll deliver the murderer to you. How about it? Suits me. Better let me have that. Right. If you think we're going to go gallivanting around the country with a bunch of goopy scientists, you're crazy. We've got a ranch to take care of. Besides, Elmer and me's got to be at Rawhide tonight for that charity bazaar. The bazaar can wait. So can the ranch. We're going on that expedition. We're not going anywhere, but back to our ranch. Absolutely. Two sounds right. Well, if that's the way you feel about it. Cockeyed, harebrained schemes. This is the worst, Stoney. We don't even know where we're going. Well, Faxon mentioned the Chuska Range. Once there, we'll fish for the right trail. Don't worry, Betty. Uh, Ms. Marsh. I guess there isn't really anything to worry about, Stoney. 
both you and the sheriff agreed that Saxon was killed by an Indian, didn't you? Well, yes, of course, but I... I'm not a detective, but I can easily detect when you're lying. Why, I, I'm... I know that whoever killed Saxon is in this party, and I know that you know it, too. Well, maybe it's better that you do know it. Here, hang on to this. There's no telling. What a gorgeous panorama. Don't you think so, Mr. Joslin? Out here, we call them coyotes. Mr. Joslin, do you care for archaeology? I uh, don't know. Never had any. I always thought it was kind of hard to peel. Oh, <laughs> you say the cleverest thing. You know, I just adore traveling around the country collecting old fossils. Well, here's one old fossil you ain't collecting. Hey, Stoney. Maybe Miss Betty would uh, want this uh, chicken scratchy notebook that we picked up near Fax on the day we found it. Let's have it. It's like Indian hieroglyphics. Oh, let me see it. Maybe I can read them. Can you make anything of it? These hieroglyphics were written by my father. They are instructions and a detailed map on how to reach the lost city. Then the city really exists. The map leads to a cave where further directions will be found carved on one of the walls. The entrance to the lost city lies at the base of the whistling skull. As leader of the expedition, I'll take charge of the map. Why should you have it? Betty's the only one who can decipher the hieroglyphics. To settle an argument, We'll each take a piece of this map. And when we get stuck for directions, we'll place them all together. On the lone prairie, where the coyotes howl and the wind blows free in a narrow grave. There'll be another murder committed if Coggins keeps on singing that cheerful song. Tucson, do you see one? On the yeah. He's hanging out dishcloth. Did you notice anything unusual about it? Yeah, them dishcloths look kind of dirty to me. Well, don't you notice anything else? Where the wild coyote will howl me. There's five dishcloths, clothesline, and a chuck wagon. So what? Those dishcloths are a signal to somebody. See his face? Narrow eyes, that's a sign of a killer. So you're starting all over again. There's a killer in this party, and from now on, I'm not going to let Coggins get out of my sight. I'll keep my eyes on Brewster. I'll take Rutledge and the engine. Where do you think you're going, Coggins? I'm going after firewood, and I don't see any reason for being fallen. Supposing you both get back to camp and stay there. Ah! 
happened, Betty? It sounded like clearing for you. Is he dead? Yeah. Probably never knew what hit him. Oh! I think I'm going to faint. Looks like the same kind of Indian writing that was on the knife that Faxon was killed with. You're right, Tony. And it's the same curse, too. I think the wisest thing to do is to turn back. It's impossible to cope with an enemy that you can't see. I'm inclined to agree with you, Rutledge. Clary's section of the map's gone. Where's Professor Frank? Maybe he knows something about this. Oh, now, you stay here. Well, that's that, I guess. Hey, one of the horses is gone. Frank's disappearance proves conclusively that he's mixed up in these murders. I can't believe it. Professor Frank was one of my father's best friends. Facts are facts, Betty. The thought of gold in the lost city probably turned him from an honest explorer into a cold-blooded murderer. Clary section of the map puts us in a tough spot. Map or no map, I intend pushing on in search of my father. We'll continue the trip tomorrow and take a chance on finding the cave. All of you folks turn in. So Coggins is the killer, huh, Hawkshaw? Professor Frank. He's been whipped and tortured. Have you ever seen that kind of a brand before, Otak? It's brand a mysterious lost cult who call themselves sons of Anatasia. Let's get him back to the wagon where we can take care of his wounds. When I regained consciousness, I was in a camp of strange Indians. They tied me to a sacrificial altar, and after torturing me, burned the sign of their cult on my chest. Then they tied me to my horse and turned me loose. What about your section of the map, Professor Frank? Well, it's in my shirt. And that was stripped from me before the torture. I'm turning back. So am I. It's suicide to continue. Rutledge is right. If the rest of you want to turn back, that's your privilege. But I intend to keep on and learn definitely whether my father's alive or not. You can leave if you want to. But all sections of the map stay with us. Naturally, if Betty goes, we'll all go. I think it would be the right thing to do, Brewster. Do just as you like. You'll stay close to me, won't you, Lullaby? Don't worry, I ain't got a chance in the world getting separated from you.
Stoney, all our grub and water was on that wagon. Yeah, I know it. Let's head back. What happened? We were attacked from the rocks. Couldn't see who it was. Well, where's Betty and Lullaby? Oh. I don't know. We'll make camp here, Rutledge, and prepare for a siege if necessary. We're going back and look for them. What happened, Lullaby, and where's Betty? Search me. Horses fell, and when I come to a go, she wasn't nowhere to be seen. What, that rope didn't get here by itself? That's no Indian rope. It's a white man's. There's the trail. Let's follow it. Keep me covered with your guns. I'm going to get that guard out of the way. The tortured Frank. See if you can spot Betty. It's Betty. Watch it, boys. I'm cold down.
attempt to follow us, my men won't miss with their next shots. I warn you to turn back or your entire party will be wiped out. Crazy. We'll never find the cave. We've got to turn back. Can't go back without water. Our only chance is to find the lost city. I know we're traveling in the right direction. You can't be positive. With the three most important sections of the map missing and another day of this thirst, we won't be able to travel. We're almost there. I'm sure we'll find Jim's in that cave. Lady, you forget I'm a deceive. I'm going to solve this case. chiseled away. It's impossible to decipher it. This expedition is hopeless, I tell you. We're lost. But no sound comes from a long way off, Tucson. Without water, it's useless to go on. Well, you think it's better to die of thirst here, eh? Well, we're going to make camp outside and then look for water. You got two canteens of water ditched in the equipment under the supply wagon, Stoney, letting everybody run around with their tongues hanging out. Those two canteens are for the women in case my plan goes haywire. Look, everybody's plenty thirsty now, right? We're going to spread out and look for water. Now, the killer knows this country, and he'll tip his hand by heading right for a water hole. That's right. Now, Lullaby, you follow Brewster. Tucson, you trail Oda, and I'll track Rutledge. What? Have leave Coggins with the killer eye here? Hey, don't be funny. This is serious. Frank, you and Coggins stay here with the women. Now remember, boys, the first one finding water will fire three shots as a signal. Good luck. According to the track, those two men we're trailing must have joined forces. Yeah, sure looks like it, Stoney. Let's keep after them. Whistling skull, Stoney. Is 
They're our men, or they would have given us a signal. Come on. Easy, Stoney. Now that we know Ota and Rutledge are responsible for our trouble, we can depend on the rest of our outfit. You're right. Let's bring them all up here. into the skull. We'll bottle them up there. Ota, go down and tell the men not to hurt the girl. I need her to help make her father talk. Our attackers can't get in. Oh, but we have no food, no water. We'd all die of thirst. Or I'll starve to death. Now it looks like this place has been hit by plague. Well, if it isn't my old friend here. 
Henrietta. Did you hear that? He called my name. Well, you're imagining things. Well, that mummy's been dead for years. You did it. I don't think that mummy will bother us anymore. Is that you, Rutledge? Dad! It's Professor Marsh! And because I wouldn't tell where Paxson and I hid the treasure, Rutledge and his men held me a prisoner here. Rutledge is a half-breed and a member of that Indian cult that uh, attacked you. He's been searching for the lost treasure, too. Is there any other way out of this cove besides the entrance we came through? Yes, there's a rope ladder that leads up to an opening in the eye. That's the way Professor Paxson escaped. I'll show you. The ladder is at the head of the stairs. Oh, Brewster, you stay here and watch over things. We'll try and get out of the skull and bring back help. Cut the rungs off of this rope ladder and use the rope to get down to our horses. Yeah.
it isn't a young detective. You should be congratulated for solving the mystery. Or should I sympathize with you? Redledge, you can't get away with this. What do you want? These Indians are the people of my mother. And as their leader and high priest of Anastasia, I demand that you return our sacred treasure. I demand all you want to. I don't know where it is. But you can persuade Professor Marsh to return it. What Professor Marsh does is his own business. Bring him along. something to try to save Stoney. You all stay here and keep out of sight. prepared this spectacle so that it would be plainly seen from the whistling skull. a good thing the sheriff decided to have us follow you, fellas. Give him your horse, Jim. like a hot time in the old town tonight.
my case be a terrible example to you. I've read detective stories, and where did they get me? Where did they get me? Look at me now. Hello, everybody. Well, for... <laughs> Just wait until Elmer sees you. Boys, you got me. Uh. 